All right, you got a boner for the draft? I don't know if I have a full on uh, yet, but yeah, it's it's getting there. I'm intrigued. I'm kind of, I sneaky think that these quarterbacks are going to suck. All of them? I don't know about all of them, but I, I think this is, we're going to have another draft where we we get a lot of hype and there's not a ton to it. I mm. really do. Really? Because I, I think there's just a lot of stretch right now. I mean, obviously, Caleb Wims, we've been talking about for a couple of years, this generational player. I'm not sold on, on Jaden Daniels at all. I think Drake May is the definition of a reach. Again, hasn't been that productive, but I haven't seen you know all 22 on him. I'm not a McCarthy guy at all. I think Penix and Knicks are intriguing, but I don't necessarily think that they're top 15 players. But I just think there's going to be this big run on quarterbacks. And I just, when this is all said and done, I think we're going to look back at this class and give it a collective meh. A lot of people like uh, Daniels. Yeah. Been hearing I, a lot about him recently. I am not a huge Jaden Daniels guy. So we we shall see. Again, to, but to be fair. Caleb's going to be good. It's not like I'm watching all 22. I'm not doing deep dives in any of this. I just, I don't think these are generational prospects. And I think people are talking about it like, you know, I, I think sometimes the, the, we, we make more out of quarterback drafts simply because we want to talk about quarterbacks. And I think this is one of those drafts where they, there's nothing wrong with these guys, but we're acting like, oh my God, like you can't pass on one of them. Why not? On, on any given draft, like this isn't the only one that you really hear people are like, oh my God, is Caleb Williams. The rest of it, I think it's talking yourself into it because you need a quarterback. And we're off this idea that the Bears will do anything but draft yeah, Caleb they're, Williams. they're drafting yeah. Caleb Williams. They're smart. Yeah, I don't outthink the room. But, you know, to those others, you know, I'd have no problem moving down in the, in, in the, in the draft. At, at, at yeah, because teams will trade up. Yes. There was a report today that uh, one team already tried to trade up to number two, Yeah, and that was the Las Vegas Raiders. Yes. Denied by the commies. Who apparently are locked into Jaden Daniels? That's what it seems like, they're they're. So going... we're gonna have Caleb with Chicago, Daniels mm-hmm. with Washington. Uh, we had Jeremy Fowler on earlier. He was saying May likely to the Patriots. Yep. If they don't trade, see, I can see the Patriots trading down. And you keep hearing yesterday that they were taking calls about that number three pick, that they'd be willing to take it, and that particularly the Vikings may want it and because then, I guess uh, was mm-hmm. it McCown used to coach May in high school? Yes, he was. He was his high school coach. And then you have Arizona and uh, the Chargers both sitting there at four and five that don't need quarterbacks. Dude, the Cardinals. I got to tell you, man. I, and look, you know me. I I don't have a whole lot of draft prep here. I just wait and see who guys pick yeah. or who teams pick, but. I was looking at just the overall number of picks that each team has. The Cardinals, who already have their quarterback, say what you will about Kyler Murray, but they have their quarterback, yes, and they, they like their their new young coach. Mm-hmm. They have six picks in the top 100 yeah. of this draft. Well, if- and they've got a pick in the top five that, or it's fifth, right? Fourth. Cards oh, yeah, yeah, number they're, four they're overall. Four. Yeah, they got a pick in the top five that everybody wants. Yeah. Like, dude, the Cardinals, if we, we always talk about the Texans mm-hmm. and how quickly they turn things around. The Cardinals, watch out in the NFC West if they can have a good draft here. They yeah. have a new GM, too. Who's they the, do. Because it's not yeah. Kime anymore, right? Kime got out. Of, no, it, he, they, they got rid of him. They got everybody. So I guess th- this is a, a draft you see what that GM's made of because that, that it sets up nice. No, it's true. But their owner is a is. Yeah. Low key, one of the worst in sports, but yeah. still, I mean, they they've positioned themselves nicely. You know, to put it in perspective, the Cardinals have six picks in the top one hundred. The Seahawks have two. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a big deal. The Seahawks pick sixteenth, and this is the and be- they don't pick again until eighty first. And this is the beauty of the NFL is that when you hit on a draft, and and we've seen drafts where you can find five starters in it, and when you have one of those, and you've got Kyler exactly. Murray, if Kyler Murray bounces back. So Arizona, I would assume Arizona's Arizona and the Chargers are both prime position to 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 move back because neither one needs a quarterback, and it, seemingly there's going to be a run on these. There's going to be a run on these quarterbacks. Yeah, the Chargers didn't Harbaugh already come out and say he wants offensive line help. Yeah, and, and but no here's, secret there. Well, but like if you're sitting there at five and someone wants to move up to grab JJ McCarthy, I'm sure. Um, let's say Minnesota at eleven. Would Harbaugh have a problem moving back from five to eleven, and maybe you don't get Joe Alt, but maybe you get the second, you know, offensive tackle taken off the board, and maybe you still do get Joe Alt there at eleven, dude. There's going to be like, think about it. You could have a quarterback go one through five if things shake out your way, and you end up with a bunch of trades. Yeah. And every year we do this with quarterbacks, and how many of these guys pan out? Like, I'm just, 
Well, and, we'll see. And, and I don't think that these are generational prospects. Every one of these guys has something that makes me a little like hold my nose, including Caleb Williams, by the way. As great as Caleb Williams is, there is a lot to not like about him. So I, I just think this is as unsure a quarterback class for potentially six of these guys going in the first round as I've seen. The ones that that seemingly, I, I think the, the the receivers and skilled position guys like tight ends, that there 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 seems to be some real real studs in this draft. And then kind of the sleeper of it is, you may get to nine, ten, or eleven before we see a defensive player go off the board. Who's the top defensive guy? I mean, that depends on who you're talking to. Like, I'm I, talking a big suit. Well, I've seen a lot of Dallas Turner uh, coming off the board, the edge rusher. I've seen a lot of Byron Murphy, uh, the defensive lineman out of Texas. Um, a lot of people really like the uh, the corner Quentin Mitchell out of Toledo. Other people like the corner Arnold out of uh, out of Alabama. And that's kind of the weird thing is like there isn't a consensus uh, defensive player that's like the you know the the overall guy. So. You know, in a, in a draft, if you're looking for defensive help, you're going to find some defensive guys that are going to get bumped down uh, this list simply because of the run on offensive tackles, the run on quarterbacks, and the run on receivers. When's the white corner from Iowa going to go? He'll go in the first round. Who's going to take him? Who's who's the where's the where's the buzz? Uh, it, it would be the greatest fit of all time, but I've seen a lot of with the Green Bay Packers taking <laughs> the white corner. What? At number 25, what? what? Which would be the greatest thing ever. if Because he can play safety and corner. Yeah, and, I can and, see it. And Green Bay uh, is moving to a 4-3, so they talked about uh, how much they, they value versatility and, and they would like safeties, and they signed Xavier McKinney uh, to a big deal to play safety. And a lot of people think that Cooper could be one of those guys that moves between the slot and the safety. And so if he's there at 25, uh, a lot of people like um, like him going to, to Green Bay. It's crazy how many of these guys have now played for multiple teams. You remember that, you know, it used to be like, well, I was thinking of Joe Burrow, you know, he was at Ohio State. Yep. Nobody ever remembers that. Yeah. But it was a knock on him. It's like, oh, what happened with him at Ohio State? Is yep. he reliable? Is he now you've got all these guys that, it, well, not all, a lot, but of a lot of them around. have played at multiple schools. Yes. It's crazy <laughs> yeah. how times have changed. A lot of them have bounced around uh, a ton and, and it's going to continue to happen. I mean that's just the, yeah, it's just the nature of the that's going to be the nature of the beast where you know the, the days of of and, and you even see it in high school now you know where people are playing at different high schools and different academies the one guy on the draft that I love that uh, I I've seen slipping and I think outside of you know take quarterbacks aside because it's it's a different it's a different position I would rather have him than any other player in the draft is Brock Bowers the tight end I, the tight from end Georgia, Georgia. Is he a badass? He is. Compare him to somebody. Is I he, think he's, is he like Gronk? I think he's he doesn't block as well as Gronk. He's a willing blocker, but um, he's a better blocker than than Kyle Pitts. But I think he is. I think he is as good a tight end prospect as I've seen in in the twenty years that we've been that we've been doing this together. Because remember, Gronk coming out had back surgery, and you know Gronk wasn't viewed this way. He just turned into a an absolute beast and. You know Kelsey, you know, and and some of these guys. These were these were later round picks that developed into something. I don't understand why Brock Bowers isn't talked about. And you know, I've seen some drafts where they have him going somewhere between fifteen and twenty. If he's there at fifteen, and you're the Indianapolis Colts, you're stupid if you don't take him because you've got a young quarterback that's a running quarterback that you're trying to work play action and do. And look around the NFL. Look around again. I've said this a million times. Look at what is winning with young teams in the league. Under center, play action pass, middle of the field. That wins in today's NFL. And mismatches at the tight end position are you know, look, you you lose Tyree Kill and you still win two Super Bowls, right? Baltimore and with Mark Andrews, and you just you see this over and over again that dominant tight ends and Brock Bowers comes in and immediately is a matchup nightmare. He's too athletic for 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 linebackers, and he's too big for safeties to cover him. And he is a willing blocker. I would say he is a, and, and this is a, a ridiculous comparison, but he's a better receiving Travis uh, Kelsey and a and a lesser blocking George Kittle. Yeah. Somewhere in between those two lies Brock Bowers. Well, Seahawks 
I mean, the Seahawks wouldn't go 16 with him, would they? I would. The other team I've seen coming up is the Jets at 10, that yeah. that would be a nice piece for Rodgers to have, Ooh. and they kind of have the other stuff in place if you want to win now that he could be a guy that helps you do that. Rodgers. Boy, that'd be nasty. The Jets already have uh, what's they his got good nuts receivers. And, what's Garrett it? Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Well, who didn't they add somebody on the other side, though, too? Didn't uh, they go get... Um, They've got they've got uh, they got Mike and, Williams. Yeah, they got yeah they went out and got Mike Williams. So Mike Williams, Garrett, Garrett Wilson, Wilson, and Brock Bowers. Yes, hey now. I just Grace I Hall. I really really like the and look at what Laporta means in Detroit. Uh, there's just I think we're having a little bit of a renaissance in Hawkinson, the, in Minnesota. Yeah, and he came from Detroit. I think we're having a little bit and, and Musgrave, a young tight end there in uh, in, in in Green Bay. Is Pitts a bust? Uh, he's not really a bust. People not... seem to blame his usage more than him, yes. like how the coaches yeah. used him. But Arthur I don't know Smith. that that's if what's right or wrong. At Super this, no. I'll tell you what. At this point, it's it's under for what he was billed as. Yeah, he was top for five. what he started out with to what he ended up here. It's it's been a disappointment. And yeah, there's some usage there, and they haven't had a quarterback, and so I I, I mean I, I get that, and so I'm not ready to write him off. He's still <clears> extremely. What are you talking talented. about? Desmond Ritter is the future. Oh wait, <laughs> they already traded him. Where's he now? Uh, Ritter ended up. Did they deal Anybody? him? He just, I, I thought they traded. I don't think they did. They deal him. I think he's just still. Oh. I think he's there. Is he? It's not like he's gone anywhere. No, he's on the Arizona Cardinals. Is now. he the Cardinals now? I had no idea. He's backing up Kyler apparently. Oh dear. The other one that uh, it's interesting in the draft that every year we we get all hot and bothered, but we don't hear a lot about is is edge rushers. You know, edge rushers have been, you know, gotta have yeah, they, they, you got to have them, but you don't hear a lot. I mean, like I said, I mentioned Dallas Turner, but he it, played where? Yeah, uh, Alabama. And, you know, and so like, but remember last year, all the hype with Will, uh, Will Anderson, you don't hear that with Dallas Turner. You got lot two out of UCLA. Um, you don't hear a lot about him. Verse came into this year, Jared Verse, the D end out of um, uh, Florida State had a very nice year. But again, in the draft, it's a lot of. Yeah, it's just it, it, for whatever reason, it's it, they've, it's kind of gone silent on these edge rushers, and so it, it'll be an unconventional draft, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And like linebacker wise, I don't know who the, I don't know who the like off the top of my head, I'm not certain where the the first inside linebacker goes. I mean, that's a position that is um, that's kind of been devalued a little bit, anyways, but. There's one where the uh, Edron Cooper uh, is the kid out of Texas A&M. You've seen another one, Peyton Wilson Peyton out Wilson's of uh, NC the State. Super good athlete. He's the guy that ran like four four, and he's the highest ranked on the Pro Football Focus Big Board at thirty. At thirty, so we we may not see a <clears throat> inside linebacker go in the first round. Which again, to me, I love tight ends because right now you've got sketchy line <laughs> linebacker play in the league. Give me a guy that can expose him. It's also why I really like guys like Lad McConkey. I love slot guys. Like, we're paying so much attention to these outside receivers, and rightfully so. Receivers are like the, the physical freaks of the NFL world right now. And Neighbors and Adunze and, and Marvin Harrison Jr. But, you know, so many teams now are playing these cover two shell looks where you can roll coverage. I can roll my coverage towards a receiver, run a cover two over the top, and be like, hey, you're not beating me. So I want guys that can exist in the slot. I want guys that can go over the middle. And now that you really can't shillelagh receivers anymore – these smaller, shiftier guys, the yak guys, the after catch guys, the puka nakuas, these guys are having field days in the NFL because you're not getting your head taken off anymore. Now, do we have the picks on Thursday? Are we doing that? Yeah, I think we survive. Well, so here, here's the thing with that is that now that we are on multiple platforms, we're not very much live on those on those picks. Like when we air them, a lot of people already know them because we're 45 seconds or a minute behind. And sometimes we're getting it late because I mean, I can put it up on the radio, but you guys won't be able to see it on the TV. That'll be a minute behind. So I think Buck's we can saying, talk about it. I think Buck's saying, no. yeah, I don't really know what he's saying. Um, I think Buck's telling you, we didn't do it last year because at the time they were coming over the radio, they were not yet on television. So there wasn't really, you guys were kind of following it on TV because that's the yeah. easiest way for I us to follow while we did the show. We so did. Too. We did. That was before we had delays on our TVs. Again, I think oh, Buck, now Buck, we're streaming. I think what Buck is saying is we can, you can we do can it do if it. you want, but you're an idiot if you do, and he's saying well, no, he doesn't want to do uh, it. I, this is not about me. This is about our audience. Don't <laughs> you think it would serve the audience to play the picks? Yes. I do think it would serve the audience to play the picks, but it it's going to be odd because we'll be analyzing what we're seeing on television at a different time of what's happening on radio. 
Does that make sense? No. Okay. Look, tune in Thursday. We may or may not have the picks. <laughs> it's just going to be. Tune like, in to find we'll out. We'll have them. We'll have I mean, them. I don't have analysis em. anyway. I, I don't know. I just listened to the little the little thing at the end of it. We're going to bring in Nemec because that dude. Oh. Yeah. He he won't shut up. So when in doubt, just <laughs> turn to him and be Why like, don't he just, I'll just be out of here. I'll, yeah. I'll come back Friday. Just be like, Nemec, go. All right. Um, NFL draft. Super cool. Uh, round one Thursday. 